Behold, my beloved Logitech Harmony One remote control that I bought from Amazon in May of 2008 for about a hundred bucks and which has served us well that this whole time, which is what, like 14, 15 years. Uh, now it's starting to develop a, a few problems. Uh, that's ignoring the main problem, that, which is that Logitech's gotten completely out of the remote control business and could turn off their device database this thing uses in the cloud at any time, which would be a big pain and certainly render this much less useful, if not, you know, um, brick it entirely, as they say. But um, the problems it's developed is it's got some bad buttons. Uh, the nine key has never worked very well, which is occasionally annoying when I'm directly entering. I'll go to the channel below and then go up one to get to the channel I need. Uh, and now the down key starting to get a little flaky and the volume up key starting to get a little flaky. So these uh, inside this actually needs to be cleaned a little bit or, and maybe the buttons need uh, new, what are called snap domes uh, on them. Uh, the other problem with this device is that the charging pads are kind of all scuffed up there. And along the way, I also lost the rubber door fairly recently that covers this USB port so dirt and crap can get in there. So I'd like to address all these things. Um, so what I went ahead and did, I ordered from Quinn at Harmony Remote Repair in uh, North Carolina. I'll link to him in the description. For uh, $10, he will sell you a defective logic board, which you can use to harvest parts off of. This one has a broken screen, which you can kind of, I probably can't get it in the light right, but that's that's the problem with this one. But uh, this is the, the inside of the, the keyboard, and uh, these are the snap dome, five millimeter snap dome switches. And so what's on here is an outer ring of copper. Below this, there's an outer ring of copper and then a silver, a, a, a dot of copper in the middle. And this is a, a dome-shaped piece of metal. So when, the, when you push on the rubber, it pushes on this metal and pushes the, you, I, you can hear it click, it pushes the center of the um, metal dome down, connecting the outer ring to the inner dot and completes the circuit. And that's how you get the, the button press. Um, this is really a pretty good switch technology. Um, but again, you know, after 15 years, <laughs> things get, things get uh, dirty. There's also uh, 10 LEDs here to light the uh, display up when you pick it up so you can see the buttons in the dark. Um, and so the idea is um, you can lift this off and I'm going to use my heat gun, my uh, rework station heat, but you could use a hairdryer to kind of... Um, get this 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 button pad off because it's stuck down a little bit and you can take these you can harvest these metal dots and um, and and reuse them now uh, there's a fellow called p1 repair um, on YouTube uh, he also goes by the name of button works w o r x and he did a nice video on doing the change you know repairing the buttons in this and I'm gonna copy his stuff exactly. And so you go, well, Ward, he did a nice video. He's articulate and smart. Why are you bothering to, to do a video? And uh, it's only a, uh, two reasons. <laughs> One, who knows what other problems I'll run into. Um, but he ex inexplicably shot it in 480p. So I'm going to shoot it in high res. And hopefully, you know, things will be uh, a little clearer. And, you know, you'll see someone else <laughs> making a mess of things here. Uh, he'd also opened his a few times. And mine's never been opened. I'm scared to death of uh, breaking the thing. So... You know, that's part of the uh, challenge there, too. But while we have this here, we can look around a little bit. Here are the two um, infrared LEDs that, that uh, control your devices. And if we flip this over, we can kind of take a quick tour through the, the board here. This is a uh, microchip uh, PIC, uh, 18F87050. Um, it can run at up to 12 megahertz. This one runs at... Uh, four megahertz, according to this clock, and uh, it has like 128k of uh, flash RAM in it and a USB controller. So I assume that's what they use to uh, uh, run the USB up here when you're when you're programming the thing. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a, a Xilinx um, 
complex programmable logic device, a CPLD. It's an XC26, 2C64A. And um, I, I don't know exactly what they use for the, this. I can tell you if I was designing this, because I was an embedded system engineer for a long time, I would use this for you know whatever little glue logic I needed to coordinate parts. But the real thing I'd probably use it for is to program a bunch of timings to modulate the LED uh, for the remote, all those different patterns that can be uh, emitted, so that instead of trying to do it in software in the microcontroller, I, I could the microcontroller could just say, hey, you, send this pattern out and the timing will be dead on, and then this can go to sleep while that is happening, or do other things. So that's my guess what this is. Uh, here is uh, 32 megabytes of NOR flash um, to store your um, devices and system configurations and all that stuff, I'm probably. Um, this is a beeper. This is <laughs> labeled switch one. Somewhere on here, there has to be an accelerometer. Perhaps it's in here, but you know, when you pick this thing up and shake it, the, the keyboard lights come on. So uh, that may be this little, this may be a relay for, for the LEDs and, and um, that, again, I'm just guessing. This is a 16-channel LED controller. This is what actually uh, you can use to turn on um, specific LEDs uh, for the keypad, um, and I assume the, the, the main transmitting LEDs. And um, what else? And this little connection here, there's usually a ribbon cable in here that goes to the, the screen. And this is what people tear off when they go into the thing too fast. And it has a little chip on it that controls the, the touch screen. That's not, it's missing from my um, crappy board here. Uh, that's all gone. Um, what else? I think this is a voltage regulator. Um, I don't know what that is. Anyway, so that's the quick tour. This is where power comes in from the battery. The battery sits here. So what I'm going to do is take this off and move it to my board. You can see the two LEDs better now in the USB connector. And then uh, I'm gonna uh, use my rework station heat gun, uh, say you can use a hairdryer or something as well, to kind of loosen the cement on this. I probably could just peel it up and then see about you know collecting some of these uh, uh, five millimeter snap domes. Now P1 Repair sells a kit of snap domes. So if you just need snap domes, just go to him and order them and you know, life will be great. Uh, so let's get to it. So first off, I'm going to grab this nice new charging pad and I'm going to cheat because I have a desoldering gun here. Make sure you can see that. There we go. Here's what the gun looks like. It's a great, the mighty Heiko 808. I don't know how you pronounce that, really. So let's see about pulling this sheet with the snap domes in it. It's glued down, but not, as I say, I could peel it up. But let's use the heat gun. This is uh, from my rework station. It's set to 250 degrees. Let it come up here. Hang on. Okay, and this isn't super hot. That makes it any easier. Yeah, it does. And there's the donut and the dot I was talking about. Yeah, the heat loosens it up nicely. It's not super gluey. Let me move the camera up so I can kind of get in here a little better.
Okay. There we go. So let's see, can we just pop these out of here? Or? I wonder if a little heat would help. So the sheet goes over the, the top of this, so you have to take them off from the bottom, from the um, concave part. And you can kind of see I've got it up on the side. But it's stuck on there pretty good. Let me hit it with just a little heat, see if that helps. Don't heat the metal up so much and burn myself here. Let's see. I don't want to deform it, see? They say you're not supposed to harvest these from the outer edge because they tend to be dirty or you want to go to lesser used buttons in the middle. So that would be the middle of the numeric keypad. Oh, there we go. So I kind of hit it laterally and it sort of popped right out. Hit it, hit it sideways. So there we go. So these can indeed be harvested. That little blemish by the tweezers is in that other one there on the, the 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock position is from the glue that was holding this onto the sheet. But uh, looks like I can harvest snap domes from here now if I need some snap domes. And I have my uh, charging pad and USB connector. So I'm ready to get to the scary dangerous part of opening mine up. So I've dragged out my magnetic parts mat to keep track of the screws. And the first step is to pop this thing over, push this button in, and pull this plastic thing off. And take the battery out. Hopefully it'll come out. Tends to be a little recalcitrant. These batteries swell up in here. I think this is the third one I've, I've put in. In fact, one of them was almost impossible to get out. Some people wind up opening this thing up just to take the battery out. Let's see, can I lift that up? How do I do this? Yeah, that's it. I have to lift it up and then it pops out. This is the replacement battery I've been using for a year or so. Now I try to keep an eye on it and catch the swelling early. And so now we are going to remove screws. Um, there are two that you can C, and supposedly two under this label, and I'm going to use the heat gum and try to gently heat gum, <laughs> heat gun, and gently try to take up this uh, label. I wanted to get close so you can see these are two size zero Phillips screws I'm going to take out. I need the camera so close, I need to move it up to get the screwdriver in here. like to get this off nicely. I don't know why. I'm trying to be extra anal today. There we go. This is lifting. Um, Single-sided razor blade might have been a 
a better choice. put this upside down so the sticky part is up. And there are the hidden size zero screws. So I'll try to get those out. And there we go. Go over here. Interesting bunch of test points uh, <laughs> under there. I guess in the factory they might connect something up to that to do a, um, what we call a bed of nails test, a board test when the, each board is finished. Certainly, I'm sure there's a way to connect a console to this thing because the microchip microcontrollers always have something like that. All right, so we've done the butt. Now let's do the top. Okay, this is the scariest part to me. We're going to take off this, this shell. And it, all the shells I've seen, the later ones that have kind of gray here, this has some gunk on it. I think that was an anti-friction coating originally that's worn off. I don't think it's just years and years of hand oil. Um, and it does kind of scrape off now. I may dump all this stuff in the ultrasonic cleaner eventually. But anyway, uh, there's a piece of um, glue tape underneath this supposedly and then clips down each side. And so I'm going to heat this and try to go in the bottom and see how well we do. I've got all my um, iFixit, you know, picks and cards and there's and all this plastic stuff. Generally, I find metal tools work better, like nice single-sided razor blade, even though you have the potential to damage the plastic. But this is always so crazy because you're always afraid you're going to break off clips, you know, but there are screws under this we need to get to to separate the two halves. So that's the problem. So first I'm going to try uh, heating this up to loosen the glue tape. And I don't know exactly where it is. I don't know if it's here or here, but yeah, well, we'll see what happens. Starting to get warm now. All right. Let's see what kind of luck we have here. What do I want to go in with? That's a, I should have had a tool ready to go, huh? Exacto. Uh, maybe a little. Oh, it's yeah. It's lifting. Maybe I will try one of these. The problem with these picks is they tend to be a little thick. And indeed, that is too thick. Probably too thick too. Yeah. Uh, I will find the single-sided razor blade. Yeah, see that does it. This is good for opening iPhones too, actually. So I'm getting a little lift there. I'll just kind of leave that guy in there. Yeah, the metal just gives you the kind of strength you need, you know? See if we can get it over here. There we go. Okay. Now if we want to stick a guitar pick in, I assume we can. Ooh. Things are cracking. I assume that's... So I'm just going to kind of work it back and forth. Yeah, I can feel the ooey gooey in there. Shoot a little heat in there. Let's not rush it. For YouTube, we can always 
speed the tape up, the recording up. And I can feel the ooey gooey. I'm not exactly sure where it is. And then part of it's just going around this bend. But now you can see the the sides are starting to separate there. So let's, supposedly you can just run a pick down this thing and have them pop. I don't know if that's true. I'm pushing in and up. Um, sounded like something let go there, huh? Let's see if that's, yeah. Okay, let's go over to this side, which looks a little more down, doesn't it? Let's try to kind of spread that one out and just, okay. You do just kind of run it up. I heard some of them go. I don't think all of them are going. Come on, you. Who's your daddy there? Hey. That side's free. How's this side free? Is this side free? Seems like it. All right, well, then it lifts perfectly off, doesn't it? Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. That wasn't too bad. And there you can see the, the tape. Um, I don't know if that's strictly necessary or not. I may leave it out. I may actually heat this up and remove it. I do have some 3M tape that's double-sided that I could use in place of this, but uh, it might be a little thick. But actually, you can feel this is kind of curling up here. So I will, yeah, we'll just pull all that off. It, the heat really uh, helped, I think. Hard to know, 100% for sure. All right, well, that was actually kind of the part I was most scared of, except for maybe the, the touch screen. So I'll put that up there. And now there are supposed to be some, some screws in here to uh, go after. So more size zero Phillips under the shell and where else? There was this one here. Is that it? Well, let's go ahead and yank these out. So now, in theory, to separate the shells, we stick a tool here in the butt of this thing. And I don't know if you can see, I assume it's these. Can I get that focused? Is that focused? Uh, these two little slots here. So we stick something in there. I'm going to try sticking the plastic thing in the slot here, my plastic poker there we go and I just turned it on its side and that I can feel the sides releasing as I do that and so now this is starting to come up I don't want to break anything so I'm just going to kind of keep running this down the side and hopefully it's not going back in so that's good That didn't look good. I guess it's okay. Come on. It's running my fingers down here. Let's see. Maybe a pick will be less um, intrusive, less wide, less thick. We can get both sides to kind of come up here and we'll pull. Yeah. 
not liking it. It's hanging on pretty good there. Um, that helped. At least the clips on that side. You just want to be careful and not screw up the plastic, you know? Hey, and we are in. And so now we have these two screws at the bottom, and they are tiny, tiny. I think they're even smaller than a zero. So let's grab the the iFixit stuff. Let's see what I can do here. I've got uh, a double zero and a triple zero. I think triple zero is a little better for this. Give you a close up. Actually, I'm going to release the, the little latch here, but I want to do it under my microscope because <laughs> I'm old and blind and it'll just be easier to see what I'm doing and I really don't want to tear these, these connections. So let me do that and I'll show it to you when it's been opened up. Man, I don't know what I'd do without a reference board and frankly, the microscope was a help too. Uh, it's this black thing on top and it flips from this side, from the chip side. And... Uh, and open so you can kind of lay your tool gently on the ribbon cable go under the black in front and just kind of flick up and it'll flip open um, I'd like to move this to show you show you it can move uh, there you go see anyway so there that's open and now in theory we can simply withdraw the cable um, again I'd rather do this under the microscope because I have the camera so close here and there's a delay when I'm looking through the viewfinder uh, so we just want to be really nice to this thing there we go yay so now I think I should be able to lift this thing out of here. Let's see. Uh, there's some... What is this rubber nonsense on the side here? Guess that's just uh, the edge of the keypad rubbers. And... Uh, P1 Repair said he got hung up in this corner, and I'm hung up in the corner too, but oh, and then I just kind of lift, and it just came away. So there we go. And here's my keypad, which will be the scene of battle. First, I'll probably replace this thing. Okay, hopefully that's the worst of it. This is the light pipe that diffuses the LEDs, and then I think below it is the keypad rubbers. There you go. So I can actually um, clean all these, which I'll probably do. So we'll leave that alone because we don't need to worry about that too much. Uh, 
first I'll probably change this and then go over and do my keyboard. But uh, been at this for a while because filming slows everything down and my wife wants to make some noise doing laundry. So I'm going to take a break now and uh, we'll come back and actually do the repair, I hope. Okay, so it's the next day. I have a few moments before dinner uh, and I'm going to try to swap the charging pad. Uh, first off, I was wrong. This is not the light pipe. This is just some diffusion backing on the back of the buttons. Uh, the light pipe is this piece of uh, pexiglass which has lensing in it that brings the ambient light from those LEDs up to points underneath each button to light up each specific button and this thing comes out. I'm not going to take it out right this second. And of course this is the touch screen. This is the touch screen cable as I think I said earlier. So let's flip this over and change this thing. Uh, so this isn't really attached any in any way. It has a registration hole that fits on a plastic post that's in the built into the case and that's about it. Although why am I having yeah I'm I'm hanging up that that registration tang here on this. I kind of just need to get it out of the way. Come on. There we go. Okay. Goodbye to you. Okay, so I've gone ahead and straightened the leads out and propped that thing up on the exacto so it'll sit there and we have a 700 degree soldering iron here and let's get some fine solder. Probably don't need much solder. The solder that's there will probably work just fine. There we go. Not my super neatest work, but adequate. I added too much solder so it's blobbier than it should be but uh, I'm not going to mess with it. So I've wrangled the new charging pad assembly into place. It was a little fiddly to get this registration tang on top of the circuit board and still have room to get the rubber piece from the top of the hinge in here. I had to use tweezers to pull it through but now it's in and it's nice to have a door and it certainly is an improvement from the old one and now it is time to turn our attention to the main event, which is the keyboard. So this light pipe only goes in one way. P1 Repair says if you put it in the wrong way, it'll slide around. But if it's in the right way, it'll be latched. I've never taken it out. And I think probably a close examination of this lensing would probably just tell you the right way to uh, do it. But I'm going to shortcut here and just put a, a mark on the front and put a little dot just so I know that that's the front of the thing. Now we will hopefully lift this out of here. And that came right out. There's the back of it. Yeah, it's pretty obvious which way is the front. The pretty side is the front. The back side has all of the uh, holes and whatnot. Okay. So what's going on with our keyboard, particularly the number nine key, which I think is here, isn't it? It's not the one all the way at the bottom. That's an E, yeah. I want to get this off of here. And um, so I'm going to heat it up so we can clean underneath. And instead of just heating the end and peeling, because I don't want to curl it up and 
you know, this one's trash because I was bending it to get the domes off, but I don't want to do that to this one. I want to be a lot nicer to this one. So I'm going to try to heat the whole surface up and see if I can sort of get it up uh, gently here. And I hope I don't mess this up, boy. This is 250 degrees. I'm not terribly hot, but we don't want to heat it up so much we start floating the components off the board. started easy and now that's hanging up so let's maybe we'll do it in sections you know see what we can see and that is and came up in fairly good shape I don't have the macro lens on anymore the, the bottom looks really pretty clean here which makes sense yeah I don't know why these would ever fail at all unless the dome just becomes metal fatigued and won't I don't heck go down anymore or or what because it really seems like there's not any way for dirt to get in here. So I really don't understand the mechanism of failure <laughs> very well. So you can probably see this better than I do. Better than I can right now. There's some little bit of gunk in that one, maybe. Let's see the number nine would be this one. You know. Heck, that doesn't look too terrible. I'd like to repair something definite, you know. So here's number nine. Uh, let's see, it'd be this one. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. Oh, look at all the oxidation on that. Okay, well, that's good. Oh, and look at that one. Oh, dear. Oh, God. Oh, this is incredible. Okay, so these are really icky. Let's see, down was also starting to act up. Oh yeah, look at all the crap on there. Oh, this is fantastic. Because <laughs> that means there's, there's something really we can address. <laughs> Let me switch back to the other lens. So I'm not a metallurgist. Metallurger <laughs> I, I don't know what's uh, causing this because I don't think contamination can come in from the outside. But they're just tarnished. It's just oxidation, I guess. And, we'll, and so that like the upper glossy coating is gone. And of course, when you press down on it, it's probably not even. And if the place that's making contact has got junk on it, it won't work reliably. So... Um, P1 repair, clean this with alcohol, and then use deoxid on it, uh, which is a, a lubricant made just for this, deoxid gold. They call it that because it's priced like gold. Um, and uh, so we're going to do the same thing here and see if we can kind of make these look a little better. Um, I have, as I said, I have 99% alcohol here, and I have these um, Kimtech lint-free paper wipes. Again, I know I'm using a lot of specialist equipment to do this. Do you need this to do it on your own? Uh, no, you can improvise. It just, all this stuff just makes it easier. Um, you know, you can use a hair dryer and razor blades and stuff like that. So excuse me now while I, while I rub a little, rub a little bit here and try to clean this up.
Does that really help? See, are we taking something off or are we just polishing? The other thing I have that's kind of useful, I'll tell you about these. These are like Q-tips, except they have a rubber pad on the end of them, so they don't leave cotton hair all over everything. Unfortunately, as they sit in the air, they kind of turn this yellow color. They come really white. They make these for cleaning inkjet printers, but you can um, dip them in alcohol, and then you have a nice lint-free swab to go around and do these, and this is actually a little easier than... using the Kymex wipe. You get these number nine. These are the most used buttons on the board right here. Yeah, if any of you have a better sense of what's happening, what, what actually causes these to get gunky. This is true in all equipment. I mean, I work on old radios and the Wipers in the pots and everything get all crackly because the metal just tarnishes from oxygen, I guess. Oxygen's pretty corrosive, but if any of you have a, you know, a better sense of the chemical mechanism involved, if you put it in the comments, I'm interested. I'd like to kind of, and then why does alcohol, you know, help it? You'd think that deterioration would be like rust. It'd be like you can remove the chemical uh, end products, byproducts that are cresting things, but you can't ever put the copper back the way it was. All right, let's look at it. Does this look better then? Did I do anything really? Let me, this dries pretty fast because it evaporates, but let me just do that. Looks okay to me. I'm going to go back to the macro lens here for you guys. Well, heck, under this kind of magnification, see, it still doesn't look that great. I don't know if that improved it at all then. I mean, look at that nine. It'll be obvious when I get this video into the editor what's going on. It's always easier to see it after the fact on the screen. I thought cleaning this might be easy, but now I'm not sure. So I'm going to do another slow cleaning pass with my head in the way. So hang on. I'll be back when that's done. I should mention you can get these on eBay. That's where I get them. I don't know what to search for, but I'll go look at my purchase history and put it up here. Um... You know, I guess part of it's oxidation, but as I'm looking at it, another part of it is just wear. The mechanical uh, action of that rim around the outside has just scraped away the, the copper. So if it gets really bad, I, you know, I think you're in, in trouble. Uh, one way to address that would be to flow some solder <laughs> very, very carefully onto this to kind of um, give it a new conductive layer because you don't want to short the uh, outer ring to the inner dot but um i'm not going to try any of that today because hopefully this isn't all that bad and then deox it to stop any oxidation again you know a lot of air doesn't get down here so there's number nine again and again i'm shooting this in log so my viewfinder is all sort of high contrast it's sort of blown out to the white side um so it probably looks worse in the viewfinder in real life it doesn't look that bad but here it looks really they all look really kind of beat up okay time to put on some deoxid gold here i bought this just for this project on uh p1 repairs recommendations and this costs like 20 bucks or maybe a little more um but he says it lasts forever and i believe it i have regular deoxid which i use all the time but i've never bought the gold it's for gold contacts we'll go with what uh p1 said oh look at that tiny tiny brush 
and I'm just going to brush a little on. Don't want too much liquid on this thing. So uh, again, I'm just going to stick my head in and do it and uh, talk to you when I'm done. The problem is the first one out of the when you pull the brush out of the bottle, it gets a lot, and the others don't get as much. The next ones don't get as much. You don't want to... I'm kind of getting a technique here to... even out my flow. Just do a little on the first one, and then move to the second one a little quickly, and then... I assume deoxid itself is non-conductive. It must be. And it, it has some uh, viscosity to it. All right, now we're to the center buttons that we use all the time. Really work on this down one. Can do about three buttons on one brush full. I was kind of bitching because the brush didn't seem to go all the way to the bottom of the vial, but now, because I didn't see the bristles on the end of the brush, and they, they do go almost to the bottom. All right, that's on there. So a decision would be whether to blot this to lift any of the stuff up, because some have got a little more on them than others, but I think, I think we'll just leave it. So that's that. So the question is, do we bother trying to change us? Oh God, this is got This is already picking up dirt from the workbench in the room. You can see, sorry, this is already picking up dust from the workbench in the room and maybe just life. Do we try to change that number nine dome? Is it useful? And we know how hard they are to get out of this thing. Oh, I don't know. I guess I'm going to see here. Let's see. I think that the 9 and the um, 7, because you're on, kind of on the... Well, no, that doesn't make sense. Never mind. I was going to say, though, those buttons are kind of on the curve, so they don't press straight down. They press in at an angle, I would think, and maybe that's what causes this to wear. So here's a new technique. Well, hey, that was kind of better than my peely, my peely way to do it. All right, just so we can say we changed a snap dome. Um, let me take one one of the ones I pulled the other day. So this is the one I yanked at the start of the video. I'm gonna try to get that, I'm gonna try to get that glue off. Okay. So I gave that a clean with uh, alcohol and it got the old glue off of it. And we've blotted it, so now let's We'll go ahead and hopefully put the dome back here. Excuse me. Excuse my head. Oh, fuck. And I think there's still enough sticky to hold that. And remember, we're going to flip this over, so that's why the 9 is on the left instead of on the right. All right, let's try to put this thing back on. Yes, I recommend the tweezer method to remove them. That was better than the bending and pulling I did before. Uh, let's see, this is gonna... Just sit right on there, we'll give it a little push down.
How's that feel? It's working. It's going clicky clicky. Yeah, I don't like the dirt on the edges, but it's all in the glue. I don't know there's an easy way to get rid of that. So then let's, we'll put the light pipe back on to protect it with our dot up so we know this is the right way. Uh, actually, I think that'll stay in there. If you have to assemble it upside down, that's how P1 Remote did. So then you'd flip this in, you'd flip the light pipe in or this way and then go. Uh, so I'm gonna clean up, I'm gonna clean these the parts I can now and then we'll reassemble it and I'll just do a time lapse of that because it should just be simple. This is just warm water with a tiny bit of dish soap in the ultrasonic. I hope it's gentle enough not to, you know, lift the legends off these labels or cause some other damage here. A little scared about this backing plate, uh, but uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm also going to... This piece has the touchscreen at the top and it must not get wet, but I am going to dip the bottom in because it is just icky icky. Let's go for it. Okay, crossing my fingers. And we'll just let this like lounge at the side like it's a famous actress at a resort. I took this out after five minutes because I was tired of holding it. I'm going to clean the top by hand. And I was going to put it down like this and I realize I'm putting, you know, this chip down on a dishcloth and I'm not taking any kind of anti-static precautions. And you probably should be wearing an anti-static wristband. So do as I say, not as I do. All right, so that was about 10 minutes and I've rinsed these and laid them out. I'm going to let them dry maybe overnight. I've got some compressed air in a can I might blow these off with, but this looks pretty good at first glance and I have to clean that by hand. So we'll touch it up manually, but... Uh, and of course, this uh, coating now looks worse than ever. It looks like it's turning white. So I may try to polish that off with a little um, uh, number two. Oh, what's the darn polish? <laughs> well, I'll figure it out and let you know. Yeah, so it's unfortunate the ultrasonic process turned what's left of this coating on here white. I don't think that's where. I think it's see because it scrapes off. So I'm going to use the famous Novus Number no. Two fine scratch remover and a piece of old shirt to uh, try and clean it off here. Yeah, Number Two is not uh, making much difference here. Should we try Novus 3? Something a little more gritty. See, I don't really care if I take the logo off the back. It's better, still not great. Well, that's a lot less annoying. Obviously, it's still damaged, but and I've, I've taken the logo off. Seems like it's gone now. I mean, the the coating. Obviously, it's still worn, and it's not perfect, but it's a lot better. It's a lot better than it was even before I started this project. So, I'll go one more time. Yeah, I can live with that, and then I'll put finish with some number two. Not sure we can ever get a luster on this thing again, but this may uh, help a little bit. Let that dry a second and then buff it out. 
you know, that's not too bad. So I may actually go in uh, Novus number two, uh, you know, the back plastic and some of the other parts. But uh, we'll let this dry now and then put it together. So everything is clean. The plastic has been polished. The screen has been cleaned. And now I'm going to assemble it up to the point where the touchscreen goes in so that we can do some testing before we put the rest of it together and make sure it's going to work. I'm not going to lie, that time lapse you just saw was me putting this together the first time. I put it together two more times. Once because there was some schmutz underneath the screen and behind the touchscreen. I had to, um, on the back of the touchscreen, so I had to get uh, the compressed air and, and blow it off. And then I put it back together and I realized I didn't have the power button installed. So I had to take it apart a second time and put the power button in. But now it's all together. And what I want to test is the touchscreen and the number 9 key uh, before I put the rest of it uh, back. So. I'm going to take the battery, the battery has three terminals, plus minus and T for the temperature sensor, the thermistor. Um, but this is up a little bit, so I'm going to take a popsicle stick, or a craft stick, as they say, and um, jam it in here, and we should get it to boot. I can get it. It's a little hard to get into position there. There we go. So there's the boot. Let's see if the touchscreen works. Yay! And not everyone knows that a cell phone camera can actually see uh, infrared light. So if I point this up at the screen and hit the 9, we ought to be able to see it. I just don't know if I can keep the power together here. I might have to stop and restart so I can set this up to take the shot. Uh, yeah, hang on. Okay, so it's in watch TiVo mode now. I'm going to try to press the 9 key if I can get to it here. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. See it? So the 9 is working. Yay, so we can go ahead and assemble the rest of it then. It's interesting that only one of the two LEDs was sending the 9 code, so the other one must be used for, I don't know, lighting up the power button, pilot light, or maybe they've split which LED does what. So here we are all finished and it'll be nice to get this into the living room and get rid of the five remotes we've been using while this thing's been down and I've been filming. So uh, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.